Right, okay, so for this week's individual project, I chose to animate my logo. So this falls under the category or the skill set graphic design or motion design. Uh, now to do this, I used a program called Blender, which is a free and open source 3D graphic design program. Uh, you can read more about it on its Wikipedia page, it's quite powerful and cool. Um, so uh, this is uh, what uh, my animation looks like. Um, it took me around about one, it actually took me two days. Uh, I had never used any 3D graphic design programs before, it's been something that I wanted to do for a while. Uh, if you want to create something similar uh, and you've never used any such programs, I suggest you have a couple of look, uh, a look at a couple of tutorials, uh, there are many on the internet and I also suggest uh, a couple of links on uh, the video description as well as my webpage to get you started. So. Once you, you go on and see those tutorials, I, I then suggest that you go on and, and do something similar yourself. Right, okay, so how did I do this? Uh, I went into Blender and I deleted the objects which were already there, hitting X, uh, delete. Uh, then what I did, my logo I designed in Inkscape, which, is a, uh, which I export as a vector file, as an SVG file, so I'm just going to import this here import uh, SVG um, and I'm gonna try to see it you, you can't see it because it's really really small and so if I go view uh, top uh, there you are it's very very small and secondly it's not centered uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to center it first of all uh, hitting grab I'm gonna put it at the origin so, and as you can see the center is here, I want its center to be here. So I'm going to get it hit Control alt shift c and I'm going to say Origin to 3D Cursor. So now it's uh, centered around this point. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate it by the x-axis, which is the red line over here by 90 degrees. So I'm going to hit Rx90. And if I go to see my front view, uh, I see it over there. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a camera. A camera is the is the thing that Blender uses to, to render the scene. So whatever the camera sees is what when you export this animation, this is what the renderer will export. If I go and see this camera, I see it's it's placed at the origin. So I'm going to grab it and I'm going to move it along the y-axis. I'm going to move it far, far away. And I just want to check what the camera sees. So I go view camera and I see my object is tiny, 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 tiny. So I'm just going to select it uh, and I'm going to hit S to scale it. So now it becomes bigger. I'm going to hit G to center it a bit. I think it needs to be a bit larger. Uh, that should be fine. I think. Right now, if we try to render this image, uh, so we go to this tab, render, you see nothing. And the reason is is that these are 2D curves, so they don't really exist in three uh, dimensions. Now, so I need to add sort of a third dimension. And what I'm going to do is create a bevel. Now, a bevel is an object in which this curve will, will take uh, the shape of. So I want this curve to be uh, sort of cylindrical. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Shift A and I'm going to add curve circle. As you can see it's put, put here, I'm going to rotate it by the X axis by 90 degrees, hitting RX 90, and I'm going to move it at top, and I'm going to make it really, really, really small. Uh, and I'm also going to name it, so if I hit N, I see its properties here, I'm going to name it as bevel. Hide this again. So now if I choose my curve and I go under uh, this tab over here. Now I can select my bevel object. So if I select bevel, as you can see, it's here. So it has taken the shape uh, of uh, my uh, circle. Uh, now what I want it to do is I want it to be much smaller. So I'm just going to hit S and reduce uh, this. This should be fine. And I'm going to do the, exactly the same thing for the three other curves. Hitting right click, a bevel, uh, bevel. So now, as you can see, uh, they they have th they exist in three dimensions. And if I hit my renderer, oh, there they are. Right. Okay. Next thing to do to add a text. So again, I go to my camera view and I hit Shift A uh, text. I'm going to rotate it again. Rx ninety. I'm going to go into edit mode, hitting tab, and I'm going to write here universe ship. 
Now hit tab again and go into object mode. As you can see, uh, the font is horrible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the font tab. I'm going to hit here and I'm going to change it to another font so that it's not this ugly. Uh, and I use the Fairview font. So I think I need to make it a bit bigger. Place it round about here. Uh, and as you can see, it's it's actually behind the curves. So I'm going to grab it and I'm going to move it along the y-axis and I'm just going to put it right in front of these curves. Right, okay, so the second text is the baseline studies designed by you. So again, shift A, um, text, uh, rotate, x-axis 90, into edit mode, di studies uh, designed by you. Exit edit mode. I'm going to change again the font because it's horrible, <laughs> and I suggest you do the same uh, if you're trying something similar. So here I used a font called Quicksand. Uh, I'm using the regular here. I'm going to scale it down, uh, and I'm just going to grab it and move it around about there. And as you can see, the curve again uh, is is in front. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab it and move it along the y-axis so now it's in front right okay perfect so if I render this up oh, there we have it right so there are no colors there's nothing at all so let's start by adding uh, textures so I'm, I'm I forgot to do this but I'm actually using the cycles renderer which is a different render rendering machine uh, rendering thing for blender so I just um, so let's start with the text that must that will be the easiest I think so I go uh, into this tab here I add new material and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose the surface type and I'm gonna put it into a mission the reason is that because I want to create a sort of 2d effect I don't want any reflections any any diffusion any of that so I'm just using an emission a sort of surface if you want a different effect I, I suggest you play around and I'm gonna set the color I, I know it's hex value so I'm gonna set the, the color to white so F F F F one this is the white I'm using actually this is not correct one this perfect and I'm just gonna in settings I'm just gonna set the viewport color to the same so that when I'm 3d view this view I, I can see the same colors now I'm gonna do exactly the same thing uh, with my title a mission uh, color is going to be F F F F F one uh, and I'm also going to set my viewport color to the same and this is also um, an emission and it has exactly the same color ff1 uh, and I also set uh, the viewport color now this curve if you remember is blue uh, so again emission uh, but this color now has a different hex value as it is blue and the value I chose is 35 5f uh, de uh, and I'm also going to set the viewport color and finally as you can see it changed and finally finally uh, this is the red curve uh, which uh, has a hex value of C9 one two three four zeros and I'm gonna set its viewport uh, color correspondingly so if I render now hopefully you'll be able to see these colors right and you can see them now I also want to change the background color because I want a, a slightly more dark uh, background so I go into this world tab I use use nodes uh, surface background and I choose the color with a hex value of 24 24 24 so this is a gray but it's quite close to black uh, if I hit on render again uh, you can see it's much uh, darker uh, right okay so this is everything as good so I've created my final scene now I need to animate everything so how do I do this first thing uh, we're gonna do is set uh, the frames so I'm, I'm if I go into this render tab here I have the start frame at 1 and the end frame at 250 uh, and the frame rate is 24 frames per second now I want my animation to last for around I don't know seven eight seconds so I'm gonna um, put this to 200 frames per second so as you can see on this uh, view uh, this is my timeline actually so it starts at 1 it ends at 200 now the first thing I want to do actually um, 
is uh, maybe the simplest is to move this text so uh, I, this text moves from uh, below to above uh, so to this position so what I want to do is in this region here I want this logo to be as it is right now so that the viewer has uh, a bit of time to take a look at it um, so this section here there will be no animation on the contrary all the, uh, during all this time there will be animation now what I want to do is I want the studies designed by you to, to move upwards for I don't know 30 to 40 um, frames so this is its end position so I select this I go to frame let's say 160 and I'm gonna hit I and I'm gonna uh, insert a keyframe so it's gonna record its location and I'm, then I'm gonna go into frame 120 uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to position this object here and again I'm going to hit I location so what this is going to do is, is, is going to create an animation for, for these 40 uh, frames and this moves upwards as you can see now I'm, so, sh I'm uh, to, to view this I hit Alt A and I can actually see it moving upwards now something a bit more complicated right now um, I would like these curves to start from zero and sort of trace this path until they arrive here now to do this it's a bit different I'm gonna start with the red curve and what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, change the bevel factor first of all uh, we want at frame 160 to be to be at this sort of position so I'm gonna hit so I'm gonna go into my curve and here uh, as you can see this is the bevel factor so as I as I change this uh, it sort of traces this path so when I do at frame 160 I want it to be at hundred percent so I'm just gonna hit I on top of this and I at, at, at frame 0 or at frame 1 rather I want it to be at the start at 0 so hitting I again and if I take a look at this animation as you can see it's growing it's growing it's moving along and at frame 160 it's going to be finished perfect now I want to do exactly the same thing for the blue curve but with a little twist I want it to start a bit later so uh, so at frame 160 again I want it to, 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 to finish so I'm gonna insert a keyframe here but I want it to start let's say at frame 20 so frame I choose frame 20 and I insert a keyframe here and I want to do exactly the same thing here but I want it to start at frame 40 First, uh, so I, I first of all lock its uh, insert a keyframe here to say this is its final position, and a keyframe 40. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the start at one. So if we have a look at the entire animation, you see the red curve starts, then it's the blue, and then it's the white, and then it finishes over there. Perfect. Now. Uh, what I want to do now is this, these, this object, this, this, and this. I want them to move in space, and and the reason is that in the beginning I don't want to give too much information. I just want to show part of the logo, and as time passes, then I want to reveal the entire thing. So to do this, what I do is first of all I select these three objects. I go to frame 160, and I and I set their final location. Now I'm going to be changing two things their location and their rotation so when I select them and I hit I I'm going to hit and, I, and insert a keyframe of lock rot which is location rotation. So this has been added so I go to frame 0 now or, or 1 rather uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, exit uh, this mode uh, and I'm going to grab these objects and I'm going to move them along the y-axis to be very very close to the camera so let's see what the camera sees this is uh, pretty close so I'm just gonna move them over the x-axis right here and over the z-axis right here uh, maybe a bit further back uh, let's see here uh, again uh, takes a little bit of time to configure it correctly but uh, once you have it you see this small part it, this is the beginning of my curves so let's see here so the final so the scene actually looks like this now what I'm also going to do is I'm going to rotate these three elements uh, over the z axis hitting R Z 
just by a little bit. I'm just going to check again what my camera views. That's not too bad. Uh, and now I'm going to add a keyframe. Again, I'm going to insert a keyframe from location rotation. So let's see what our animation looks like. Up, oh, you see, here, 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 oh. and it's done. So that's it. Uh, now, if you want to render the final scene, um, you just go uh, on this uh, tab. Uh, you can uh, choose the dimensions. I don't know, there are multiple HDTV, you can add the, the resolution. You can also um, choose uh, various properties such as the output, sorry, uh, the output here. So you can export it as an MPEG, uh, an H264, or you can also choose an encoding. So anyway, I'll let you play with these parameters. Uh, to put it on YouTube, I believe I selected um, the dimensions HDTV 1080p, and then I went to MPEG, and I selected MPEG 4, and I hit on, uh, on this button. So I hope you enjoyed it, um, good luck and see you uh, next week, goodbye.